What's going on, guys? It's Mark with Limo Marketer here. I am joined by Alan from uh, Delaware Limo. Thanks for coming on, Alan. Yeah, no, I absolutely love it. Uh, pleasure to be on here. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. So uh, we were having a chat the other day in the Facebook group, the Limo Marketing Mastermind. And Alan uh, had some really great advice. Um, I just, I believe I had a general question. Hey, for new operators, what would you guys, or or for seasoned operators, what would you, uh, what, what advice would you give to the guys just starting out? And Alan wrote a supposedly really long post and his computer mm-hmm. refresh or something, he lost it. So I got, I got all the way through it. I was on my phone and then uh, it did this weird thing where the keyboard went up and I couldn't get back to my post. So I had to like try to get back to it and just all disappeared. So I was like, oh man. So I was going to give, I was going to switch it up and just do like one sentence. I was like, nah, I might as well just try to write it back out. So I got like 50% there where, where it was supposed to be, but yeah. Well, it, it was really spectacular advice. Um, and so, uh, I mean, just to summarize it, really just learning from um, those guys who've already kind of, uh, you know, been there, done that, uh, which is typically always pretty good advice, uh, so long as they're, you know, the right people um, and you want to model uh, what they've done. Um, I'd like to start at the beginning, though. Um, so how old are you, Alan? Uh, so I'm 27. I'm okay. going to be turning 28 in, uh, let's see, 23 days from now. So let's wow. say 28, almost 28. <laughs> That's wild. Uh, so you're definitely uh, one of uh, the youngest guys I know in the industry. Uh, so so give me some history. Um, why, why the limo industry and, and how long ha- have you been doing? Uh, have you been doing yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Delaware Limo has been uh, official for about four, four years and some change. So about like three, three months over four years. So okay. in 2018, uh, the end, I think it was August 2018 is when we officially started. Uh, prior to that, actually, so how we got we, we got originally started was that uh, my business partner, his name is L, and his father used to drive taxis. So this was like 2012, 2013, 2014-ish around that time. And he's been driving taxis for almost the past 20, 30, 40 years of his life wow. in New York and then and then in Wilmington. And uh, so that was kind of the back background there, kind of sort of when Uber was just taking off. And, uh, it, you know, we kind of found ourselves in this opportunity. My business partner, he was driving Uber and he was driving taxis while he was going to school. Me, I was just doing my, my freelancing on the side, learning about life and business and marketing and all these different things i never went to college or anything so i was kind of on this path of just self-discovery figuring out what i'm good at what i like to do which ended up on business sales marketing and that kind of thing um and then we found ourselves you know working together we were just you know we we met in the uh he was going to university of delaware at the time i was living on campus to get the college experience without actually going to college so that was <laughs> nice <fun. laughs> uh, but yeah that's how we met and you know we were just we've been in sync since then Wow. That's awesome. So then you were like, what, 20, what, 23, 22, 23 at the time, right around there. Yeah, exactly. So we were, uh, so we had both moved to South Philadelphia and, uh, yeah, 21, 22, right around that time. Um, all my hard work paid off, uh, finally landed a job at a marketing agency, uh, up, up in the, uh, the North Philadelphia area, and uh, oh no, sorry. Before that, we we had both landed a job at this company called Haibu, which is used to be Yellow Book, and then they t- um, transformed into a digital marketing yeah, agency type of company. Sounds familiar. Yeah, we both started working at this company, Haibu, and then at this time, uh, a lot of the things that we did before, um, if you want to go get into it, but all the things that we did from before, about four years prior to that, when uh, we were we were doing like taxi and black car stuff and marketing things started paying off. We were just getting tons and tons of calls. We were getting like 300 calls a month. So my business partner, oh, he was, you know, housing these phones, just taking phone calls. We're at work. He's taking these phone calls, like dispatching out his dad. He's driving the taxi. So you guys have this job, right? That you were both working at. And, uh, but you had a little side project. I actually remember because we spoke a long Mm -hmm. time ago and I was like, oh my God, you're getting that many calls from a Google, my business, I believe. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So we, uh, so way back when this is like 2012, 2013, we, uh, 
somehow got conned in, into getting the limous into the limousine business. This uh, this taxi driver, right? He uh, his name was I won't say his name actually, <laughs> but this taxi driver. He was he, he approached us. He approached uh, my business partner L, more business partners at the time. But he was like, "Hey, do you want to start a limousine business? You know, you could just pay me five hundred bucks a month. I'll put you under my insurance. I'll put you give you a tag. You guys just buy your own vehicle. You know, whatnot. I'll give you the calls." Did never happen, by the way. We never got any calls from this guy. But we were paying this guy like five hundred bucks a week, um, and we were just we would just sit in this town car. We bought this like three thousand dollar town car. We would just sit. And on the side, since my background was marketing, uh, and then Elle's background is a little bit of marketing as well, websites and development, things like that. You know, we built a website, we created our Yelp listing, we created our Google My Business listing, we did a little bit of SEO. And, uh, you know, we kind of set the foundations for ourselves. We were getting, you know, a few calls here and there from And it. this was in 2013, sorry to interrupt, 2013, yeah, yeah. 2014, you start, okay. I was yeah, gonna yeah. say, because it yeah. takes some time to get some results with those things, wow. Okay. Yeah, exactly. This was like 2013, 2014, around that time. And, uh, you know, we started getting a little bit here and there, you know, a couple calls and, but n never enough to where it was like, okay, this is a, this is a business now. So, you know, we were waiting for these calls from this guy that was supposed to give us these calls from the hotels and whatnot. Um, after, you know, a few months to a year of doing that, we we're like, okay, this is, you know, this is crazy. We're paying you 500 bucks for no calls, no jobs, nothing. <laughs> you know, we were just paying him basically his, his car payment and his insurance for him. Yeah. Um, and then, so flash forward, you know, we, we cut that, you know, Elm was still going to school. I was still learning more marketing, more sales things. And, uh, flash forward for four years, once we started working together, um, randomly actually was kind of like, uh, uh, randomly, sorry, there's a little bit of background noise where I'm at, uh, yeah. randomly, um, we decided, Hey, you know, I wonder if we could take some of the skills that we learned and, yeah. You know, let's let's do a little bit more with this listing. We so we decided to, you know, ramp it up. Basically, we started you know getting more reviews. We started doing a little bit more SEO. Yeah, um, just building the building the foundation. Next thing you know, a few weeks later, calls are coming in left and right, left and right. So yeah. these calls are coming in. We're trying to get these you know these calls covered farmed by out. exactly yeah. farmed out exactly, and uh, uh, it just started getting to a point where we're like, hey. I wonder if we should start a real business with this. And then yeah. next thing you know, yeah, Delaware Limo, Delaware Limo was born. Nice. And so that was in around 2018 where your call volume was like, hey, this could be a business. That's the hardest part typically of business, right? Is is getting new customers. And so exactly. you guys actually, it's funny, you figured that out first because a mm -hmm. lot of operators, they get in by driving, maybe Uber and Lyft. And then they're like, oh, you know, I've got the driving down and the vehicle and everything. Now let's figure out the marketing. You did it in the reverse way. And I think it's a testament to like how powerful that can be um, mm -hmm. based on where you guys are now. And so, yeah, yeah. so tell me, so in the first year or two, was it, you had the calls probably like you, you got the sales down. Um, what were like some of your challenges? Um, because 300 calls a month, that's insane. Um, were most of those being farmed out in the beginning? I'm guessing they were, or how did that work? Yeah. yeah so, uh, in the beginning, actually, so before we even became like black car service, we, so technically we used to be called Delaware limo taxi purely for SEO reasons. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we were basically, you know, trying to get whatever we could cover, get covered from Elle's dad, who was a taxi driver. So, you know, he had the taxi, we would just be sending these guys vans and doing whatever we could. Um, at a certain point, we were like, okay, we need to kind of get, we need to get a car, we need to get something. But we were young, we were both super young, our credit wasn't great. You know, we we're like, how, how the heck are we going to get a car? So um, I would say that was probably our, our first biggest challenge is like, how do we fund a vehicle in between the both of us, you know, both our credit sucks. Mine was a little bit better at the, at the time, but how do we even get a vehicle? How do we even get started? So uh, ended up actually me, I pulled out a personal loan out of my bank account at Wells Fargo at the time, pulled out a personal loan, scrapped some money together. And then we, we purchased our first vehicle up in Michigan. And that's kind of, you know, we were turning a lot of people away, but that, that was definitely one of the, the, the hardest first things to figure out like, okay, well, you know, we got the, we got the LLC, we got the bank account now, you know, wh how do we take this and, and actually run with it? Yeah. Get and get some actual vehicles. It's so funny because a lot of guys, like I said, they do it in reverse. They've got a lot of those things. They're like, Oh, how, how do I get 
the calls. And I think, you know, if you can do it your way, that's the way to do it because you guys had, had the work and it's like, um, okay, now we need the vehicles. Now, what was your first vehicle you bought? Did you say? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So we, uh, we drove up to Michigan, like the very tip of Michigan. It was like snowing out, drove like 16. It was something like that it was something like crazy, but drove like 16 hours. We bought a 2017, uh, Cadillac XTS had like 20,000 miles on it. Awesome. First car. Awesome nice. First car. Yeah. Okay. Very versatile, right? With the SUV. Yeah. Um, no, 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 XDS sedan actually. Oh, 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 oh interesting. Okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. because I'm guessing you're like uh, a vast majority of your rides were less than, or one or two people. Is that why mm -hmm. you guys chose that one first? Um, honestly, it was just the price. We we're like, it was the oh, really? You guys got a screaming deal? Yeah. It was like, we got it for, I don't know. It was like close to like 20, 25 grand or 24 grand or something wow. like that. Amazing deal at, at the time. We're like, okay, this is you know, it's up to standards, you know, it's, it's nice it's luxury. Yeah. You, know, you can afford an SUV, but it was, you know, it was a perfect first car to start off with. Nice. Very cool. Okay. And, uh, and at that point you're probably still farming a ton of rides out, right? Um, now your second vehicle, was that an SUV or, or what, you know, what, let me ask you this. What's your fleet look like right now? Yeah. Yeah. So our fleet looks like right now, uh, we have four SUVs. Okay. Uh, we have three sedans. One of them is down. Uh, sorry, scratch that. We have three SUVs now. One of them went down. We're in the process of purchasing another SUV. Uh, we have two stretch limousines. Uh, we have a sprinter limousine. We have a uh, transit for transit 14 passenger. We have a Mach 2, which is like this conversion sprinter that they built. They stopped building them in like 2014, 2015. If you get a chance, it's it's awesome. It looks like a space. Really? Uh, yeah, that, that was a pretty unique find. Um, and then we also purchased uh, recently a 25 passenger party bus nice. uh, purchased from Heaven on Wheels down in uh, uh, Josh, uh, Josh Roman, yeah, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then we just bought a 20, uh, 20 something turtle top 31 passenger shuttle bus. That thing is Whoa. awesome too. You yeah. guys pretty much have everything but charter buses, it sounds like. Like the really big yeah. buses. Um, exactly. Like coach buses. buses. Yeah, yeah. Coach buses. So, um, Wow. Okay. And wh when did you end up getting your first stretch? Was it mainly sedans and SUVs for a while or, or when did you pull the trigger on that and, and why I'm guessing yeah. because you're getting the leads, yeah. right? Exactly. So it was, uh, you know, we had purchased our first sedan um, and then we ended up buying two more sedans. So we, we bought another, uh, bought a 2019 XTS and then we bought another 2019 XTS around that same time. We were getting tons of calls for limousines. Like, Hey, you guys do stretch limousines and we were just turning people down. So we actually, at this point, we weren't really doing too much of farming out. We started bringing everything in house and we just didn't really know the, the farm out game that much. Yeah. Um, but we were getting a ton of calls for stretch limousines. We're like, all right, we should buy our stretch limousine. So I actually went down to John Olton down in Richmond limousine. Sure. Uh, Richmond limousine yeah. And uh, drove down there, met him, bought this uh, 2011, you know, last year of the town car, white stretch uh, uh, executive coach builder limousine. Classic. Talk, right. talk this guy down from like, I don't know, it was like 13, 14,000 bucks. Talked him down to like 10 or something like that. But, nice. you know, <laughs> I'm sure he regrets it now. But uh, yeah, so that was our first stretch. Sweet. Okay. So that's interesting. So sedan, 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 stretch. And mm -hmm. it's all based on the leads, right? That's mm -hmm. the beauty of it. Like what? what's the first vehicle I should buy? What's the second? What's the third? Well, what are you getting the leads for? Right. And so it sounds mm -hmm. like you were, uh, you know, getting these, I'm surprised you didn't get an SUV by then. I'm guessing you just weren't mm -hmm. getting a ton of like what three, four passenger, um, rides. It must've just been mm -hmm. just a lot of one and two passengers. Uh, it was a little bit of both. It was partially, it was also financial. It's like, you know, we couldn't afford an SUV. Like at first when we were first starting out, I, I, I like to think of it in terms of like secrets of the industry. So yeah, it's a good book. Uh, Peter Thiel, uh, zero to one. He talks about the love that book, that. dude. Great book. Love yeah. that book. And yeah. uh, one of the secrets is we didn't know is like we were just thinking we just saw dollar signs. Like why would we pay fifty thousand bucks for an SUV when we could pay twenty five grand for a sedan, make just almost just as much money? But then we didn't. You know, at that point we weren't busy enough to understand like the logistics, like swapping in and out from a sedan to an SUV, from a SUV to a sedan. So purely financial until we realized, hey, we should probably get an SUV. We're getting these these SUV trips now. Um, 
that's when we started realizing, oh shit, okay. SUVs actually make a little bit more sense as sedans in terms of logistics. Money-wise, maybe not so much, but logistics definitely. So I love that you brought up zero to one because, uh, and that that's a great part. So essentially what he's saying, you know, he's a huge contrarian. He's always mm-hmm. many times going against, but not just for the sake of it, right? It's mm-hmm. being a contrarian is good, but you want to be right. <laughs> and so most of the advice I see is get the SUV first. And by the way, it made sense to me intuitively, but look at the end of the day, um, I think they're giving that advice to people who maybe aren't getting leads yet, right? They're not really getting that much business, um, maybe from their own marketing or whatever. And so that's the commonly held, you know, get an SUV first, but you guys were getting the business. So you knew, Hey, if we can get, I didn't know. So you pretty much pay double then for an SUV. It sounds like, uh, exactly. 50 grand. Yeah. Wow. And so, yeah, that just makes it so much more. And then you can redirect those funds into, you know, you can have two sedans, it sounds like, right? Almost for yeah. the cost of an SUV. I'm sure the insurance would make exactly. it a little bit more to have the two vehicles. Um, mm-hmm. So so that's awesome. So that's a big learning lesson. Since you had the leads coming in, you're like, hey, it just makes sense to keep getting these sedans. So you had the three sedans, then you got the stretch limo because you were turning away a ton of business, it sounds like. So you weren't mm-hmm. farming out then a lot of these stretch limo rides or? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it wasn't actually until about the end of 2019 that we started farming things out. So uh, 2018, got our first vehicle. We were thinking like, okay, we're going to maybe buy one more vehicle in 2019. Ended up buying three more, you know, two, two or three more <laughs> at, at this point. Um, but yeah, we were turning down a lot of business, like people were call in for stretch limousines, call in for party buses, what have you. And then, um, cause at first we, we weren't really thinking in terms of farming out. We were just thinking like, we, this is, you know, going back to, to, to taxi times. Um, yeah. you know, we were just dispatching out the trips, you know, we were yeah. dispatching out to, to El's father who had the taxi. Um, but end of 2019, we're like, all right, we're getting all these, uh, stretch limousine jobs. I started going out, finding the the different operators in my in my area, building some relationships, and and that point, we found out okay, we might be able to actually just farm some of these trips out. Yeah, so it was the end of 2019, it lasts like three months where we started farming out, and that's when we we're like, oh, yeah, yeah <laughs> we should we should probably do this. This yeah, is like a no brainer, right? Because yeah. so up until that point, you're like, sorry, we don't have it. Sorry, we don't have it, and. Mm-hmm. What kept you from like, hey, we should farm these out? Is it protecting your brand? Because if they don't do great service, is it just you're like, well, we don't have the connections. Like we want someone we can trust or a combination of those things, I'm guessing. Uh, really just ignorance. We just had no idea. <laughs> okay, that's fair. We had, yeah, we had no idea. I would say like the first, almost the first year of us in business, like I think the first year in business we did, it was either 80,000 bucks or 180,000 bucks but not a lot of business. We had no idea what we were doing. You know, we were just driving, you know, we were just driving, taking calls. Not a bad first year for most, especially if it's 180, yeah. that would be insane uh, yeah. first year. So, you know, and we just had no idea. We didn't know that, you know, farming out would be a huge part of our business. We just, you just, just a lack of knowledge basically. Yeah. Um, but once we saw like, okay, so we can expand our business, not buy more vehicles, still make more money, all goes to the bottom line this is a no brainer. And win, you know, win. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been awesome. Sweet. Okay. So, um, what, so you started farming out before you bought this stretch or, or after it's a little bit cloudy to me now. Um, yeah. I'm just think, curious. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think I have my, my years mixed up. I think we started farming out before we bought the stretch. Okay. Okay. Right. Cause yeah, you no, probably it's, it's figured right. at yeah. some point you're like, dude, we are farming so many of these trips. Yeah. And I I'm guessing there comes a point where you do the math. It's like an algebra problem, right? You know, mm-hmm. cause you have your fixed costs and your variable costs. You're like, mm-hmm. Hey, if we're, we're giving these guys, what, you know, five, you know, four grand, three grand a month, mm-hmm. you know, our expenses would be less than that. And is that kind of the, I'm guessing yeah. you went by gut feel or did you actually, Hey, it makes yeah. sense now. Yeah, no, actually, no, I think back. That's exactly what happened. So we purchased our first sedan in 2018. Then we purchased two more sedans, I believe, in 2019. At the end of 2019 is when we started farming out stretch limousine trips. By February of 2020, that's when we're like, 
okay, we're farming out a, a, a pretty good amount of stretch limousine trips. We should probably buy one. So it was, you know, the, the, the path of growth was already laid in front. We were already doing the business. Now it's, now it's yeah. a matter of bringing that margin back inside, you know, in-house. Yeah. Cause you knew you could keep it busy. Did you buy it in February, 2020? I, th- I think it was February 20. Uh, you know, I, I might be a year ahead or something, but, uh, we bought it. Yeah. Sometime during the slow season, I think it was cold out still. Um, yeah, or around that time. Right around COVID and <laughs> like right around yeah. there. I think it was before that. So again, I might I might have my years one. Oh, okay. One year yeah, they're all blending that. together. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. speaking of COVID, how how much did that, you know, for, for everyone I work with, the first two months, March and April were just like or even mm-hmm. May, uh, or mm-hmm. part of March, April, May, horrible. Most of 2020 mm-hmm. horrible. Um, but then there was a massive rebound in 2021. Was it similar for you guys or? Yeah. So we kind of had a, um, different experience for COVID. Um, definitely like when March came around, it was, you know, we were full speed ahead. You know, we had our limos. We have our, I think we, at that point we had our cars, limos. I think we had one SUV at the time, something around that, around that range. And I just remember all these cancellations coming in. But luckily, um, around that time, we had actually secured a pretty huge contract. Uh, so we were doing work for the, the uh, presidential campaign. So, oh, uh, what? So, yeah, Whoa. so Biden's campaign, uh, we were became their transportation provider uh, every time they came around to Wilmington. And then on top of that, once, once we kind of got our foot in the door and they started trusting us, we started doing everything all across the country. So that entire time. What? COVID, That's that, crazy. I never yeah. knew that. Yeah, that, that that entire time during COVID, uh, we were doing the entire campaign across the country, all over every single state, uh, doing all their movements, you know, all their trips. And then uh, on top of that, uh, we then got recommended to the 2021 uh, inauguration. So we ended up be- becoming the, the provider for the uh, the inauguration. So we arranged all the buses, all the sedans, SUVs. How many sedans. are we talking here? That's got to be insane. <laughs> It, it was pretty crazy. I think we did, um, not to get too specific, I think we did upwards to uh, quarter mil plus in wow. like a span of like a week. It was Oh insane. my gosh, that's wild. And mm-hmm. I'm guessing a friend of a friend, was that an internet lead? Um, Don't tell me it was an internet yeah, lead. <laughs> a, little bit, a, li- a little bit of both, a little bit of both. Um, okay. Yeah, they had a provider in the area that wasn't really up to par. And then, you know, they found us liked what we were doing. You know, we were phone call away, phone call away. Yeah. And, then, you know, just, just by rec- getting recommended, they were like, Hey, these guys should do the, you know, do the, do you guys know anyone that's, that can do the inauguration? We're like, yeah, we can had no idea what we we're walking into no clue, but yeah, it worked. That's out. incredible. So, uh, do you, do you help them out any more with, with, with stuff? I'm guessing that's a nice yeah. foot in the door. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do um, a lot of the transportation still. Yeah, we wow. do. We do a good amount of the transportation still. Incredible. That is, that is awesome. And so, um, so 2020 wasn't a horrible year then for you, like because of this contract, yeah. right? That yeah, helped it, a lot. It, def- it definitely saved us for sure. It, it kept us in business. Um, it kept us very busy until, you know, to this day, but it kept us very busy during COVID. Um, yeah. And kind of allowed us to stay afloat and and some, um, yeah. And then of course you you know you have the the EIDL you know the the government funds and you know a whole bunch of different different things. So it, you know in a sense like we were kind of at this point where we were still small but growing. It kind of allowed us to, I guess you could say, kind of catch up to a lot of different operators at the same time as grow. Um, yeah. So it was it it was you know it was rough in terms of in house. You know we were doing like nothing and you know nothing and how we were doing a job here a job there yeah um, but it also gave us a, a really good time to kind of grow the team um and by team i mean like our one one plus one person plus two per you know person to kind of figure out the dispatch the operation side and that yeah. was super huge because it gave us a lot of that that person a lot of time to learn the business and really get really comfortable for it. so by the time that we came out of covid it was full speed ready ahead. to go team is set exactly now, so do uh, do you and your partner, is it one of you who mainly handles like the marketing stuff and the other guy handles like the operations? I'm guessing you, I know you do marketing because you yeah. really know your stuff with online marketing. Um, yeah. Is that the setup? 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, my business partner, L, he does, uh, he does more of the operational side right now. A lot of financial, legal, HR, all that, all the stuff that I'm not necessarily necessarily best at. Um, I handle more of the marketing, the sales side, the systems, the processes, and then of course we have our number one guy that does uh, daily operations, so dispatch reservations, um, and then we kind of work synergistically to kind of propel, I guess you could say. Interesting. Okay. And that that's awesome. I, I didn't find out that until I was like in my late twenties, like I kept on partnering with people that were just like me, you know, yeah. we're like sales guys into marketing yeah. and we didn't really have an operation, someone who was organized, which is mm -hmm. super important in any business. Yeah. Uh, what's your team look like today? Uh, by the way, this is yeah. November of 2022 uh, mm -hmm. when we're shooting this end of November. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so our team today looks like we have a total of, I think, off the top of my head, anywhere between 23 to tw to 28 staff between drivers and, and office staff. Um, okay. Most of our drivers are full-time drivers, so we don't have as many drivers as a lot of other operators. Um, and then on the office staff side, we have uh, one, two, including myself, uh, and, and Al, one, two, three, four, and then we just hired another two, so... We're up to about six, not including me and L. Okay. Wow. That's, uh, I was, wasn't expecting that big of a number, but yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah, a lot of those are drivers and most of them are full-time. You said most of them are full-time. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. That's incredible. So wh what's your, uh, what's your guys kind of goal uh, next year? Just grow more. Is yeah. there another side of the market you want to be more heavily involved in? What are you guys mm -hmm. looking to do? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so there's this thing I like to follow is like every time your business triples, your the way that you operate as a company changes completely. So we're in this phase where we're kind of tripling again in terms of revenue. Um, so I'm more of the grow, 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 grow guy. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? I just want to full speed ahead. Um, but that does leave a lot of gaps for operational things that yeah, processes. Yeah you know, uh, got clean up the mess, right? <laughs> exactly. I'm the one that leaves the, the mess. And then, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's actually kind of slowing down a little bit uh, in terms of growth with, you know, growth is of course still number one in my, my books, but also growing the operations as well. Smoothly yeah, yeah. Pulling the machine, making sure everything is, uh, everything is solid and, and um, get it, turning everything into a process. So turning the, the growth into a process, turning the operations into a process turning the improvement of the operations into a process. I think a lot of times we kind of get stuck in this, everything is right in front of us and we just do, do, do. But it's like, hey, if you don't have a clear rhythm to how you're going to grow or a clear rhythm of how you're going to create new products or a clear rhythm of how you're going to improve your offer. or Where are you learning market, all this? Everywhere. YouTube. Um, I, I watch a lot of YouTube. Uh, Alex Hermosi, he's, he's a go. Love that yeah, guy. He's a go. Uh, Check him out if you guys yeah, haven't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's really good. I, a lot of my marketing stuff I learned from Russell Brunson. You know him. Yep. Funnels. He's sure. amazing. Um, and then also just kind of deep di diving into the other aspects of like leadership management um, and just kind of like learning a little bit from everything, you know? Yeah. I, I definitely, I would say my, my strong suit is marketing and sales, but then that kind of leans me towards one way. So kind of bridging that gap and learning a little bit more of how, how to make that into an operation of the business has been yeah, super cool. Yeah. I know what you mean because, you know, you want pretty much a process for everything. Uh, you know, people that are really big in like sales and marketing, like, you know, typically not That's as it. good, and, but yeah, you, uh, we know yeah. it's important. And I like what you said, literally a process for creating a process. Yeah. The bigger you grow, the more, um, yeah, you kind of need a blueprint for, for just growing and, and that's the stuff that's not fun, but it pays dividends and that cleans up the mess that the, the awesome marketing and sales creates. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so mm -hmm. I like that. So every yeah. time you triple yeah. everything mm -hmm. changes, you said. Exactly. Exactly. I think, uh, and you know, this is Alex Hermosi says that's basically, uh, to go from zero to 100 K it's, you do a certain specific thing then you go from yep. 100k to one mil you do a certain specific thing um and then you one go to from three one to ten one or three, yeah yeah to, and yeah, then three yeah yeah different. yeah it's completely different yeah which like right you know that's that's a big lesson i'm learning right now it's like you know i i do drive like a lot of the growth but also at the same time 
if I wasn't there to drive the growth, who's doing it? So for me, it's like, how do how can I get another person to be the person driving the growth rather than all coming out from my brain? Yeah, because, and that's definitely, yeah, what you do day to day, if you're doing seven figures, I have no idea what eight figures looks like, but mm -hmm. to go from seven to eight, you know, you need middle managers, right? I'm guessing mm -hmm. that's what I've, you know, I've only seen it from Hormozy videos, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. it completely changes because you kind of have to just re keep replacing yourself um, mm -hmm. and dialing in, hey, what do I do best, right? And exactly. so, mm -hmm. um, dude, that's that's awesome. Um, what is your, um, and I know you made a comment on Facebook about this, but what advice um, for like newer operators, for like, guys that um, maybe are just coming over from Uber and Lyft, what what sort of um, advice would you have for them um, yeah. to, to have the growth, you know, like you've had? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say the, the number one thing is learn how to learn. That's the first thing. Um, I think when you first start, you kind of have an idea of what you're good at, right? And I think a lot of the, the operators that first get in, they just know how to drive and they know how to deliver excellent service, which is great, which is really good. But the skill of business is completely different than the skill of driving a vehicle and being a chauffeur. Yeah. Um, so getting a full understanding of the business, of what business is, diving really deep into like the, the, the structure of how a business works, whether it's marketing, sales, legal, finance, all these different, getting a high, at least at first, a high level overview. Yeah. And then- and then finding either the right resources or finding the right people that can kind of teach you those things and being open to learning those things. I think, I think learning is probably the most important thing that you could do when you first start out. Um, but specifically for newer operators that are looking to make their first hundred thousand bucks, first half a mil, um, I would I would lean uh, less from. Don't get me wrong, service is super important, but I would lean more towards marketing sales because you don't have a business if you don't have leads, you don't have sales. If you don't have that, you don't have anything. But, or, and on top of that, that's how you can continue improving the service, improving your yeah. product, getting more vehicles. So everything kind of falls first on the sales and operations until you get past a million bucks. That should be your number one focus by far. And you should be consuming everything you can about that while at the same time learning about how the business works. Yeah. 100. It's so funny. Uh, you know, I kind of learned these things from not even owning a limo company, just watching and wondering why are some companies able to make, you know, the marketing we do work and then mm -hmm. other ones weren't able to. And it's just that it's, it's simple things like, okay, you know, what do you say on the phone? How do you follow up? just these little things that, yeah, you, you really have to learn. It's kind of like you, you need to get a, not a business degree, but in real life and, mm -hmm. and just learn the basics, right. Uh, of sales. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of these guys try to transition from chauffeur driver and they think, Oh, I can just get to, you know, 20, even 20, 25 a month. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you need to have some other skills in place in order to get there. Right. Mm -hmm. And you kind of did it backwards where you kind of had the, the marketing, that was your strong suit, which honestly, if you can have anything be your strong suit when you start out, because once, yeah, once, once you have the leads coming in, you can mm -hmm. figure out what to say on the phone, how to make, mm -hmm. how to make an offer. Like you were saying, um, mm -hmm. is there anything that you found? Because I know we're both big fans of Hermosi. I'm sure you've mm -hmm. read the hundred million dollar offers or maybe listen to it. Um, mm -hmm incredible book for any amazing business book. amazing book yeah for uh, any in my top three top three yeah. if not number one yeah no we all we like the same guys teal hermosi um yeah. so when it comes to like an like an offer because i've always thought you know for the limo industry what would that sort of look like um have you like implemented anything that you're like hey that was that's sort of what he's talking about because since I've never been in the business, I'm like, yeah, what do you offer? Like with the gym thing, he had certain, uh, you know, guarantees or packages. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything in specific? Yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's the million dollar question, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll be honest, it's, uh, at least for me, it's like something that I'm starting to, to continue understanding. It's, it's very, 
it you know it might be simple for other people it's but it's for me it's it's a very tough thing for me to grasp <laughs> Um, I've been thinking about it a lot myself, dude. So yeah. trust me, I'm like, what yeah. can you offer more yeah. than what is already being offered, right? Exactly. <laughs> so I, I would kind of split it off into two different uh, two different categories. First, what are you offering as a company? And then, then who are you offering that thing to? So the thing that's kind of tough about the limousine industry is we service so many different types of clients, right? Yeah. We do we do corporate corporate accounts. We do retail birthdays weddings yep. people that are just going to the airport so there's so many different categories and you can get you know even more creative with that you know you can do wine tours you can do beer tours you can and do, they care about different things right they care about different things so um, i think a better way to think about it that i'm starting to understand even even now and starting to implement even more is um understanding first of which client you're trying to target yeah um, so if it's let's say the bride of of a wedding they want a specific thing, right? Finding yeah. out what their their biggest problems are, um, if if whether it's making sure everything goes smooth, making sure vehicles will fit at the venue, making sure that all their guests will get to one place, making sure their their wedding party will be taken care of, and then formulating first. It, the service doesn't change. The service is exactly the same. But how can you formulate your service to speak directly to that person and then giving them everything that they need in order to, to be perfect but again it's not it's not a it's it's not a one-time thing it's it's tough because like you're always going to to have to improve that that offer to that yeah. person i oh my yeah no i i love that by the way um and so yeah whether it's a wine tour wedding I guess you just create different buckets and then maybe create a list of, okay, these are the things they mention most often. You know, you mm -hmm. can even look on reviews. What are they leaving negative reviews about? And mm -hmm. essentially reversing the risk, ensuring, mm -hmm. making them confident that those things will not happen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I'll add to it. I'll add to it. It's, it's kind of two point, right? So let's say, for example, if we're speaking to, uh, affiliates per se. So a lot of, you know, a lot of work that we get as well. And, and a lot of operators to get a lot of farm in work uh, from these larger affiliates, they might have a specific set of things that they might require, whether it's 24 hour dispatch, whether it's newer model vehicles, whether it's, you know, certain level of service, uh, certain level of communication. Yeah. Uh, one part is the offer, uh, but the other part is also building that product that you have, the, the service that you're offering. So yeah. your your service kind of it's, it's the service is the first thing. A lot of, we have the service. Most companies have at least part of. It. If you don't, then you probably need to figure out the service part first. Yeah. But then once you have the service down, it's a matter of communicating how the services that you have speak directly to that person. So if it's an affiliate, look, we have 24 hour dispatch. So you'll make sure we'll make sure that your clients are always in or your dispatch is always in communication with us or if it's you know we have our five million dollar coverage so yeah it, speaking directly to that person uh specifically and then like you're saying the risk reversal the guarantees these things are the cherry on top that kind of sets you apart yeah i love that so it's really yeah it's it's not just the service it's how you communicate what the mm -hmm. service is going to be like mm -hmm. and making sure that you know, you're not saying the same thing to everyone, your corporate clients, your brides, mm -hmm. people going on a wine tour, right? Having mm -hmm. a different list for each person. And I love that framework you just came up with, like the affiliates, how they each want something different. It's really the same thing when you think about mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah, Everyone's exactly. looking for that different thing. Um, that That's that's brilliant. And I'm sure you're going to come up with a lot more, you know, as time rolls on. So you're four or five years into it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for four uh four years and uh let's see, August, September, October, November. So four years, four months. Yep. Nice. Well, dude, mm -hmm. I can uh wait, maybe do a follow-up with you in a year and uh, yeah, see yeah. what new lessons you've learned. And uh mm -hmm. we're gonna wrap this up because I want to respect your time. I know you mentioned you have a hard cutoff. Um, mm -hmm. thanks so much for doing this, Alan. Um, uh, really stoked. Yeah, yeah. Uh no, this is awesome. I, I really enjoyed this conversation. I'd love to do this again. Awesome. Thanks, brother.